A game that was thought lost forever, the first ever Silent Hill RPG, a retelling of the original iconic Silent Hill. And it's on a free TV phone? Why, Konami, worry? After last time checking play novel Silent Hill on the Game Boy Advance and learning about its secrets and expanded lore, we are ready to move forward in our quest to discover more obscure Silent Hill games. So elation and jubilation gamers from all around the world. I am Luchan and this is the World Gamer Show. And today we're going to take a look at a game that was almost lost. Lost? And yet, here it is, in our greedy hands with the first ever exclusive gameplay footage. What's this? Just discovered it. So let's explore the mysterious story of Silent Hill DX, the Silent Hill RPG you never knew it even existed. Let's party! <laughs> Cheryl's my little girl. Let me take you back to a time before time itself. A time before smartphones, the time of actual cell phones. 2006, the year that Japan and other Asian markets got blessed by Konami with the release of Silent Hill. Yep, just Silent Hill. No, I'm not referring to the 1999 classic. This is Silent Hill DX. So why am I referring to it as Silent Hill DX if the official name is just Silent Hill? Silent Hill DX was only available through the Konami Net DX page via mobile phones. A paid service that would also provide other titles, including Konami classics like Radius, Metal Gear, and so on, all on your mobile phone in 2006. This was actually pretty impressive, I won't lie. But anyway, that's why Silent Hill DX is my preferred way to call it, because it's part of the lineup of games of the Konami Net DX web service. So, if you consider that Silent Hill DX was available only in Japan and on other Asian markets like China, and that it was dependent on the servers of Konami Net DX being online, and that these have been shut off for a long time now, you can see that this game was easily going to become lost media. Sorry, I didn't mean to alarm you. Except, the Chinese version was the only one ported to Java phones back in the day, making it much easier to preserve. So, that's the version we're going to play today. But what is exactly Silent Hill DX? What we're talking about here is some sort of enhanced version of the Silent Hill play novel on GBA we already looked at in the previous video. Just before! Don't you remember? Except it's not just that, like at all. So, we're still talking about a retelling of the events of the first game from 1999, with Harry as the protagonist, in his quest to find back his daughter lost in the town of Silent Hill. Now, if you remember, one of the things I complained about the GBA game was the fact that it was basically just a visual novel with very little interactions except for the classic multiple choices and some small puzzles. Now, this has been completely addressed in DX, since now the game uses the play novel as a base to actually build a much different game around it. In fact, we're talking about an adventure game with point-and-click elements and random turn-based battles, effectively making this a Silent Hill RPG. Not bad! With that established, we can now finally begin to play this game. In Chinese. Since there was never an English version of this game officially released as I previously mentioned. I don't understand a word of this. But there was an attempt at a fun translation, and I also managed to get my hands on that one, but it's an unplayable mess, unfortunately. I mean, kudos for trying, but I already know the story inside out, so it's not that big of a deal in the end. I couldn't get past this line of dialogue here, and it's nearly three seconds into the game. Or rather, its second part. Something bizarre is going on. Yes, because Silent Hill DX was released in multiple parts, and once you completed one part, you are given a password so that once you start the next one, you can carry over your decisions and inventory. And now we're finally into the game. And at first, Silent Hill DX could almost pass for just a port of the GBA play novel, with them being nearly identical in their shots recreation. Things rapidly change, 
once you're given control and realize that you can actually move in the environment, examine your surroundings and even access an actual inventory. None of that is present in the GBA game. The exploration is in first person and it's basically done through point and click mechanics. You have a cursor, you can move around, but you can't really freely drag it. You can simply choose between predetermined spots in the still image that is the environment you're currently exploring, and you can use set cursor to access the option to move to another room through the map screen or browse through your item list. Exploring will reward you with key items, which will allow you to solve puzzles and move the story forward, but also support items such as weapons, ammo, and medicines. And you will need all the support you can get to survive monster encounters. Yes, this game even has actual random battles. And these are actually pretty interesting. First, you can see when you're about to be dragged into combat, thanks to this green meter here, which will fill up or decrease depending on your actions. Once it's completely filled up, you will start a battle, which is turn-based, so in a sense it's pretty classic. The perspective stays in first person, and you get a closer look at the enemy in front of you with basic animations for attacks. You can choose to move to get closer or farther from your foe, and in this case, positioning can make a difference in the type of weapons you can use. Your gun can inflict damage from afar when you're out of enemy's reach, but bullets are scarce, just like in the classic game from 1999. If the monster gets closer, it can hit you, but it's also vulnerable to your short-range weapon attack. Your health is represented by the background color of Harry's picture in the top right of the screen, going from green to yellow to red when you're about to die. And you can also replenish it both during combat and while exploring through the use of healing items. You don't get experience from this fight, so it's all about survival through resource management. This means that if you take your time and explore way too much, you will get dragged into battle too many times and eventually run out of bullets, forcing you to close combat encounters which will inevitably deplete your health on the long run, and health items are limited as well. The presence of a battle system and Harry's health implied that he can indeed die. I haven't thought about that. Again, in stark contrast to, to the play novel in GBA. This way, the game aims to recreate the tension of the original classic, and within the limiting context of mobile faults in 2006, I'd say it succeeds. You can also save anywhere, which is not only a big help, but also necessary considering you were supposed to be playing this on the go on your mobile phone. Silent Hill DX addresses all my criticisms from the play novel. Why couldn't we get this one on the GBA in 2001 in the West? Yes, DX doesn't have the small bits of FMVs, which was one of the things that impressed me the most on GBA. What about Sybil? We don't get Sybil's campaign, nor all the extra endings. In DX, we only get the same exact endings from the PS1 version. For all the good stuff we've seen so far, though, I have to admit that there are some negatives here too. For example, the environments are not easy to navigate. Due to the budget nature of Silent Hill DX and the limiting technologies of the mobile phones of the day, many backgrounds are recycled, making exploration a little bit of a pain because you are constantly looking at your map, which is also your main means of movement. See, if you press on the move option, you will automatically take your map and use that to select your destination. But it's not like it's a fast travel system or anything of the sort. You can only move to one of the rooms next to yours. You can skip rooms or use shortcuts. This means that if you want to go to the other side of the building, prepare to some slow map screen tedium. Moreover, it's not easy to understand which room you've already explored and which not. I'm kind of lost. What really prevents the pace from crawling too much is that encounter meter which slowly fills up and forces you into battle. Even the music gets more menacing once the meter is almost full, and that's a nice touch. The music overall is actually pretty decent considering the hardware, and hugely contributes to the oppressive atmosphere.
The story itself is a pretty faithful recreation of the original game, down to the characters you meet, including of course Sibyl, Kaufman and so on. But also the environments and the puzzles do their job. Even though one aspect in which the GBA game gets the upper hand is that the puzzles are way more interesting there. In the X, it's mostly get key item to use it somewhere else, there are no actual puzzles. It's a bit of a bummer, but overall, given the context, you can color me impressed with Silent Hill DX. I find it most fascinating. It's both a big step forward compared to Play Novel, but also a small step backwards. If we could have combined the two, then we would have gotten possibly one of the best visual novels, or rather, a proper Play Novel. I'm also very happy to have been able to play such a hidden chapter in the Silent Hill series. Truly, this might be the most obscure of them all. I literally did not manage to find any footage prior to recording it myself for this occasion. None of our leads have panned out. I didn't really have a proper idea of what to expect, and I'm glad I could share this experience with you guys. What I found was one of the most fascinating experiments in the series, a mix of point-and-click adventure and classic turn-based RPG, all set in the universe of one of the best games in the franchise. Heck, one of the best horror games ever made. Yes, we don't have a working English patch, yet, but maybe the awesome Silent Hill community will step in and save the day like they always do. Not the heroes we deserve, maybe, but certainly the heroes we need. That said, DX is really not the right game for newcomers to the series, but if you are a hardcore fan and have exhausted all other choices and simply can't get enough of the Silent Hill lore, especially the first legendary game, then you need to play DX the almost lost Silent Hill adventure RPG you never played. This is just one guy's opinion on the internet, so now I want to know yours down in the comments. Did you know about the existence of an actual Silent Hill RPG that was almost lost? What's your favorite game in the series? Share your thoughts or memories in the comment section down below. Also be sure to smash the like button, as it really helps a lot. And join me next time as we march on in our quest to dig up obscure Silent Hill games. Next, we will talk about another very obscure Silent Hill which I'm sure many of you did not play. Why can't you just tell me? I'm going to give you just a small hint. It's going to be an experience. Also, if you like Silent Hill and horror games, be sure to hit the subscribe button to always be up to date with my latest videos. But most importantly, I want to thank you so much for sticking to the end of this video. Just turning up shows your commitment to the process. I will be seeing you in my next one, but until then, stay safe, play safe world gamers. Oh,